It's Blunty suggested that we run down the Nazgul Eco versus the Gepra Sea Vapor versus the Axis Manta. How could I say no to him? So we got the Nazgul XL5 Eco, the Gepra Sea Vapor. Axis Flying Manta. I want the Manta 5. If chat knows if there are any others, maybe they could also recommend another one that would fit in this uh, set. But this seems to be each of their their cheap entry. And right now they're like 200 to 240 or so for analog. Um, and I've seen a lot of people talking about like, which one's best or what's better or why are they also cheap? That sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Well, the iFlight website is having a little problem. Not loading. We may have to go to a different... iFlight hasn't been loading for me. I don't know why. Let's try... Here's the analog. Okay. Axis Flying Manta 5-inch. Five 5-inch. Five I want the analog. Here we go. Analog. Geprc Vapor 03, Geprc Vapor Analog. <laughs> Receiver Protocol Express LRS, Express LRS. Let's make it apples to apples. Express LRS. All right, so let's start. Let's say that both of these, all of these are five inch freestyle drones. Price wise, 236, 239, 235. They are essentially the exact same price. So that's nice. And I got to say that I don't think you'll go wrong picking any of them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. The Axis Flying is with GPS. Is it cheaper without GPS? Because I don't think the Nazgul comes with GPS. I think it's extra. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Nazgul doesn't come with GPS. No, it doesn't. How about the GEPRC? I don't think the GEPRC does either. Not standard. No, okay. So the uh, Axis Flying, a little bit of an edge here. It's either $20 cheaper 219, 236, 216. Yeah, well, $15 cheaper, not that much. Or you get a free GPS. Hmm. Probably not a deal breaker. 1.6 watt VTX. The Manta. 1.6 watt VTX. Nominally the same. 1.6 watt VTX. Uh, basic. Now, obviously, you know, we don't, we don't, there could be some difference in the actual performance, but on paper, they're spec the same. I'm not too worried about the uh, ESC. Like the Axis Flying has a 60 amp ESC, the GEP RC, the, the Nazgul has a 55 amp. They're all, they're all going to be fine. And what will make one better than the other? will be the actual build quality. So they all are going to have a 8-bit BlueJay ESC. So no difference there. Um, the Taker has BL Heli S. Uh, they should really just flash Blue Jay onto it instead of shipping it. Uh, I'm, I don't know for a fact it doesn't come with BL, uh, with Blue Jay. Um, maybe it does. I, ho I would hope it does. The GEPRC has an F7 flight controller. That's a big... Well, I would say it's a big advantage. It's uh, Practically speaking, you're just going to fly the drone as it's delivered, and you're probably not going to notice the difference, but they have to get credit for having that uh, F7 flight controller. Whereas the others, this is an AT F435. 
So that's an F4. It's the AT32 chip as well, so you're gonna have to have some custom drivers. It's not a big deal, but it's a little annoying. You'll have to install different drivers to get it working if you haven't ever before. And an F405. So the flight controller, the GetRC wins. Caddx Retel camera. Flight time 14 to 19 minutes as if. Yeah. They're very close. I don't see anything about them that, like, would make one the clear winner. Are all three of them, uh, like, Dead Cat or Truex or... They're all available uh, as either Dead Cat or Truex. I don't know for a fact that... I think I've clicked Truex for all of them, but they're all available as a Dead Cat. Okay. As well, if you prefer a Dead Cat. We got some nice 3D printed uh, or injection molded uh, pieces here. Like on the iFlight, you got the injection molded side plates and the injection molded XT60 holder. On both of the GEPRC and the Axis Flying, we just have a standard XT60, which I, I don't have a problem with that. But some people are going to, it's going to appeal to them, this kind of injection molded stuff. I'd say the fit and finish on the iFlight is higher. But the working on the iFlight, the iFlight would be lower on my list because they pack everything in, they put side plates on it, and then if you have to work on it, if you have to like replace the receiver or something, it's really packed in there tightly. It's really integrated, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to take it all apart and work on it. Whereas the GEPRC and the Axis Flying are going to have more of a sort of a traditional layout where you just take the top plate off, boom, and you're good to go. Of them, I would lean toward the GEPRC because I've had more experience with GEPRC stuff and I feel like I can trust it. Whereas the Axis Flying, I've had less experience with it. But that doesn't mean the Axis Flying is worse. It just means that I haven't had as much experience with Axis Flying stuff. Whereas GEPRC is pretty... GEPRC is frankly aggressive about sending me stuff. They're like, hey, do you want this product? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of busy right now. And they're like, well, I sent it to you already. And then sometimes I review it and sometimes I don't, depending on how interested I am in the product and how busy I am. But GetBRC is just like, just send it to Bardwell. Whereas Axis Flying has, says, hey, do you want to see this product? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of busy. And then they're like, okay. And they go away. And... <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. I don't think you're going to go wrong with either one. And it's hard to find, a, a, like, there's a few little things that's like, well, the iFlight has a very nice fit and finish and injection molded pieces, plastic pieces. The motors on the iFlight are very good motors. Um, for It's a fact. Uh, the GEPRC is good, too, and the Axis Flying is good, too. There's not really one that's a clear winner. I don't know. What do you think, Blunty? Now that seems like about what I was seeing. I kind of wanted you yeah. to look at them both for the clip and also just to see like what you thought if you saw anything I didn't see. Because yeah, they, it seems like all the companies sort of looked at each other and was like, "This is where we're going to land." So yeah. yeah, and the price is amazing. Two hundred and forty dollars for an analog five inch. I remember. Oh, Grandpa Bardwell, pull up a chair, children. I remember in two thousand twenty. Let's say maybe even earlier than that. And Diatone had a bind and fly five inch for, for $190, $195, maybe, maybe a little less. And I was like, damn, $200 for a bind and fly. Amazing. And so now it's $240, which is more, but like not that much more, you know? So just snap them up. 